A warm welcome to our service at Kilmont Parish Church's online service. It's great that you can join us online so we can worship together. Today is Pentecost Sunday, so we'll be exploring the dramatic events at the start of Acts where the Holy Spirit arrives and empowers Jesus' disciples, igniting the early church. We encourage you to watch, listen and reflect as we worship together. Merciful God, the gift of Jesus' life in us is visible in the way that we show the fruitfulness of that gift. We know that the fruit of the Spirit consists of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Yet so often we put conditions on our love and joy and peace are difficult to discern when our words and actions deny their presence. By desiring instant results to most things these days, we confess that we forget what it's like to be patient. We find ourselves neglecting the needs of others because we run out of time to be kind to anyone other than ourselves. When we persistently make self-centered decisions rather than Christ-centered ones, our understanding of your goodness and faithfulness is weakened and our discipleship lacks credibility. In this aggressive world, it is easy to believe one can't get anywhere by exercising a spirit of gentleness or even self-control. Gracious and merciful God, grant us your forgiveness and your love so that we may truly care for one another. Refresh and renew us with the Holy Spirit so that we are faithful and vital dis disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Ruri and Ailey. Seven and a half weeks, 53 days, 53 days which changed the history of humankind. On Good Friday, Jesus was crucified and he died. On Resurrection Sunday, Jesus rose from the dead. On Ascension Day, Jesus returned to heaven. And on Pentecost, Jesus' promise was fulfilled and the Holy Spirit came. 53 days from the death of any hope that Jesus might be the Messiah to the birth of his church. And our church here in Kilimant was born on that first Pentecost. So Jesus goes and the Holy Spirit comes and the Holy Spirit hasn't gone away. And all this is going on in Jerusalem, right under the noses of the people who killed Jesus. Neither the casual brutality of Rome nor the murderous cunning of the religious authorities could stop Jesus rising from the dead on the Sunday. Nor stop the Holy Spirit from coming on a Sunday 50 days later. And meantime, in Jerusalem, the, Jer the disciples have been sticking it out They've been talking and walking and touching and listening and eating with Jesus. And Jesus has told them, his followers, to get busy waiting. He left and they held on. And then the Holy Spirit stepped up and came down. And Jesus' disciples from villages in Galilee became the universal church of the risen Christ. A church which will never end, will never be constrained to one place or one time or one language or one culture or any one way except that of Jesus. 53 days. Ruri is going to read for us the spectacular story of that first Pentecost. Our reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then, what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At the time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running, and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. 
They were completely amazed. How can this be, they exclaimed. These people are from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Here we are Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the areas of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. And we hear all these people speaking in our own language about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? They asked each other. Well, thank you, Ruri. What can this mean? Not an unreasonable response to what the crowd have just seen and heard. What can this mean? Well, as you know, some of them didn't even get that far. Uh, they just couldn't handle this new and unknown thing, and so they defaulted to what they knew, and they mocked the believers for being drunk at nine o'clock in the morning. But others knew what they'd seen and heard, and they were able to handle it and to have the courage to take on this new reality, even if they were amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? That's what they asked one another. And these weren't naive people. They'd traveled to Jerusalem from all over what we call the Near and Middle East, from North Africa too, and from some of the greatest cities in the Roman Empire. These weren't just a bunch of credulous bumpkins. Some were Jews by birth, others Jews by their own choice, and all were open to what God might do. But even so, even although they knew what they'd seen and heard, they just couldn't understand what it all meant. Now, Peter, of course, was ready with a Holy Spirit-inspired answer. And we've been working our way through his response, and, and basically it was this. He said to them, so he said to the crowd, remember that Jesus whom you had killed by the Romans? Well, it's all about him. He is the Messiah, and he did rise from the dead. And you got it horribly wrong, but God is making it right. And so now the Holy Spirit has come. That's who you saw in the flames and in the noise, and that's who was speaking through the believers to you as you heard them talk in all these different languages. God's word delivered in ways that you can understand and that you can carry with you. What can this mean? Well, Peter concluded by telling the crowd what it meant for all of humanity and what it meant for them. Everyone present had a choice whether to change their lives or stay as they were. And if they decided that they wanted their lives to be changed, if they were willing to follow Jesus, then they would receive the Holy Spirit too, just like the believers that they'd seen a few moments before. And that change would happen because it would be God's change, a change from God, by God, towards God. And each person would carry that truth about Jesus, that message of change, their own transformation back to their own cities and towns and villages in their own languages. They would each return home to their own culture. And of course, they would face their own challenges and problems, injustices, and the wrongs of their own place and time, and also the things that they celebrated among family and friends and community. What can this mean? Well, it's a question that Peter answered for humanity. Jesus is the Christ. He's living, he's reigning, he's our Lord and Savior. But each person had to live out that answer for themselves in their own lives, in their own languages, among their own families and communities. And that's the same for us today. And that's where John is going to take us further as we continue to ask, what can this mean? Acts chapter 2, such an amazing passage in scripture where we see the Holy Spirit work mightily and it's a passage that I find myself going back to time and time again. It's exciting, it's accelerating uh, and you can imagine being there in the day and being one of the people seeing the, the disciples come out and speaking in those different languages and being one of the people who are asking the question, what does this mean? What does it mean that this has happened? And this is something I want you to think about a little bit because 
the, the person watching may have thought that same thing, and the person reading the passage as well might think as well, what does this mean? So I want to unpack that a little bit. So in the old uh, sorry, in, uh, for the disciples, what that meant for them is, well, suddenly the Holy Spirit has showed up and is now dwelling in them. So what does that mean when it comes to their mission? They've been tasked as, as followers of Jesus to go out and to spread the gospel to all people, to tell people uh, of Jesus, to make disciples of all nations. And suddenly, with the Holy Spirit coming and dwelling with them, they know God is with them every step of the way. They know that they're not tasked to go and do this thing alone. Instead, they're tasked to do this with God by their side with God in their very actions. That's so important, such a crucial thing that, let's be honest, would give me hope as I'd be going forward, would give me bravery to step forward, would give me a desire to share the word of God. And that's exactly what it does for the disciples. It gives them boldness, such a key word. They are bold to step forward and tell others of Jesus from this moment onward. Then also as well as that, the Holy Spirit gives them a great gift in this moment, the gift of tongues, to be able to speak in other languages. Suddenly all the people around are hearing the glories of God in their own native tongue from people who couldn't speak that before. God is giving gifts to those who is serving so that they can go out and make disciples of all nations. One of the biggest barriers for them would have been language. Now that's not a barrier anymore. So that's what it meant for the people then. God is with them and God is enabling them. What does that mean for us now? And the exact same is true because the same Holy Spirit that was there with them is here with us and dwells in our church today. Here in Killament, here in Scotland, here in the whole world, all of the church as a whole has the Holy Spirit in the center. And that is so crucial because it helps us to realize that great mission the disciples had, that we have, joins together because God is by our side, dwelling in us, helping us to fulfill that mission the same way he did with them. And more than that, he continues to give those good gifts. We don't often see the same gift of uh, speaking in other tongues right now, but we do see a lot of the gifts spoke about in the New Testament. We, uh, when it comes to Acts and several other of the letters that were sent, uh, there's several gifts mentioned. I'm going to mention a few that I think we have here in Killamon. The, the gift of teaching, the gift of evangelism, and also the gift of hospitality. These are three things that are so important that God cultivates in our hearts and in our minds. And it's something that we can move forward knowing that Holy Spirit is with us as we continue doing that great mission means we can be bold to step forward and to continue doing his work and to cultivate the great gifts he gives us. Teaching. An example that I'd like to bring is we, we usually have a, a good few Bible studies here at uh, Kilimanjaro. I've been blessed to be part of a lot of them. Uh, and every now and then somebody just brings out something that's so crucial. Like they could just sum up the entire evening with like one line. And that's so encouraging and it's such a strong teaching moment. And it shows that every member of our congregation has this opportunity to teach others as they even share a little thought on a passage as they're in a Bible study. And it can mean so much. The same with evangelism. We're all tasked to tell others of Jesus. And you know, so, uh, sometimes that can just be what Jesus has done for us, how he's impacted our lives. And I see several people just telling stories of how they've, they've went and done that very thing. And then lastly, hospitality, having our arms open wide, the Holy Spirit wanting to essentially bring people into our area. He does that through hospitality. We have that here in the cafe as we can come, sit down, be served by people from our very church and just have an open space to be able to say hi to people from afar. Obviously, we can't do the same things we used to before, but it's this opportunity of hospitality and that brings us all together. So the Holy Spirit, he, he works in us today and he continues to hone us through these gifts that he's given us as a congregation. We are blessed from that. We can take boldness and move forward to continue spreading his word. Hopefully that has been a blessing to you today as we keep trying to serve God together. God bless. Let us pray. Almighty God, we lift up our world into your hands. And we think particularly of your spirit and our desperate need for your spirit to move in us here today. We think back of the early church who through the power of your Holy Spirit exploded exponentially, reaching far beyond what that handful of folks in an upper room could ever have imagined or believed. But by your power, that's exactly what happened. A church which reaches every corner of the earth. Father God, help us by your spirit to be that same church. 
wowed and, and amazed time and again by your power in us and through us, transforming our lives and the world. And Father, we think of a number of areas around our world where we find grief or pain or sorrow, especially right now with the conflict in Israel-Palestine, especially over Gaza. Lord God, we desperately hope and pray for peace, that there would be no more death, no more pain, that there would be no more conflict. Almighty God, it's one of these situations that is so hard and difficult and needs your spirit to step into. So we pray in the name of Jesus for peace. And Father God, we think also of the effects of COVID throughout our world, especially in India, which is being ravaged right now. Mighty God, we ask that you would slow, slow that infection rate, that there wouldn't be quite so many people getting caught up, that there would be sensible measures put in place. Almighty God, we ask that there could be a turning point in the right direction. We thank you that restrictions are lifting here in our own country, but we do worry and concern for rising infection rates in certain areas. Again, Father God, it is only your hand and your power that can save, that can transform, that can change things around. So give guidance, give wisdom, we pray. And we lift all that is going on in our world up into your hands. You are our God and we have our faith and our trust in you. Almighty God, we pray in your holy name. Amen. Well, thank you to Johnny and Callum and of course, uh, Ruri and Ailey and Ruri. We're going to finish our time together by inviting the Holy Spirit to come down upon us. And so may the Holy Spirit come down upon us wherever we are, whatever language we speak, upon our nation, our community, our families, our church. Come down upon us to change us and inspire us. And may God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us all, now and always. Amen.